Hi guys, 18 Dap here and welcome to this match preview for Tuesday night's League One fixture, Doncaster Rovers vs Burton Albion. Let's get the video started. So guys, welcome to this match preview, Doncaster Rovers vs Burton Albion in League One this Tuesday night. If you're an existing subscriber, welcome back, thank you for returning. If this video has brought you to the channel, welcome, please click that subscribe button so you don't miss any future content. And if you are new to the channel, this is the format that we go through match previews. We look at the previous meetings between the two clubs, not too many between Donny and Burton. We look at the current form, which is not very good reading for us Rovers fans. I choose a Doncaster Rovers player to focus on, say a few words, what I'm thinking about that individual at this moment in time. Then we have a look at, quick look at the opponent history, um, honours and my opinion on the one to watch for you guys. But please, in the comments down below, let me know who is your key players because you know your club better than what I do. And then towards the end, me and the family have got predictions league table, so there's an update on that. And then I give my all-important score prediction for the game at the very end before we finish up. So moving on to previous meetings, as I say, not too many encounters between Donny and the Brewers, only eight in our history. Rovers coming out on top three times. We've shared the spoils on four occasions and Burton have won one of those eight meetings. Looking back at the last five, we have to go back to the 15-16 uh, season where it was a home draw nil-nil. And then the 18-19 season, Brewers just had the edge with a 1-0 away win, uh, or a 1-0 home win for you guys, and then at the Keepmo a 2-2 draw. And then last season, before the season was curtailed, we managed to meet each other once, and that was a draw 2-2 at the Pirelli Stadium. And then earlier this season, Rovers ran out 3-1 winners at the Pirelli, but I think it could be a very different game coming up, because Burton, at the start of the season, are a very were a very different team to what they are now. But I'll get into that round about now because as you can see Rovers are form has fallen off a cliff since the start of 2021 and over the last five one draw four straight defeats and a bit of a humiliation on Saturday at home to Wigan losing 4-1 not very good watching didn't enjoy that one bit Burton on the other hand very good result on Saturday against Portsmouth and that gives them two wins one draw and two defeats in their last five. And Burton undergone a very impressive turnaround since the 1st of January when Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank took charge and it's seen Burton seemingly go from dead and buried in the league, struggling down in bottom place uh, in 24th and they've just kept on climbing the league table over the last couple of weeks, couple of months uh, and they're now sitting 18th, 10 points clear of the bottom four. So a fantastic job by Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank, a win percentage of around 65% since taking charge of Burton, which is absolutely phenomenal. So it's going to be a very, very tough game Tuesday night. And Jimmy has got some very, very good results out of Burton since coming in. Wins against Gillingham, Hull, Charlton, Peterborough and Pompey on Saturday just show how good they can be on their day. And based on our application over the last couple of games, well, last six to eight weeks, um, our commitment, our desire, I think it could be a very, very long evening, especially looking at the last two results against Bristol Rovers and Wigan, where really, looking on paper, no disrespect intended to Bristol Rovers or Wigan, both struggling teams down near the bottom of the table. We had aspirations of top six. We should have been taking six points from those two games, and we've taken non-conceded six scored two which is not very good and we're currently in relegation form thankfully i think we've got enough points to uh to survive this season but the aspirations of top six for me have long gone which is sad to say very sad to say but i think our season is over as i'm going to mention here because another inexcusable performance from the players for me on saturday uh as i say wigan struggling bristol rovers were struggling I think Bristol Rovers had the worst form in the league before we went there. Uh, the beat us 2-1. We've now got the worst form in the league. We faced a Wigan side who had not won in five and we were 3-0 down in 33 minutes. And looking around the squad, nobody was pulling the, the team together 
Tom Anderson was trying, but the rest of the squad heads were down. They just looked defeated straight away. Um, and I feel for Andy Butler. You can argue on both sides of the fence. He's, tactically, as as he got it for this for this standard, probably not looking at the last couple of games. But he did try to make early changes. Uh, Thirty five minutes in, made a double sub. Uh, Taylor Richards coming on, Bostock coming on, and I think they impacted the game a little. Um, and we did get a goal back before half time, and I thought they did put a fair amount of effort in and. It's just words escape me how frustrated I am from seeing our start of the season just crumble away to nothing. Uh, is it the aspirations of the board? I don't know. We we don't know deep enough into the club what situation is financially after this last, last year or so. It's a tough one. Um, have they gone with Andy Butler because that is literally the only option that they had. They haven't got the finances because they backed Darren Moore during January. We just don't know, um, but it would be nice to see some answers and some sort of guidance on, on what is expected because for all I know, the aspirations were top six, even with Andy Butler coming in. That was still the goal, that was still the aim um, and the gamble just hasn't paid off, unfortunately. Would I like to see Andy Butler in charge next season? I wouldn't be surprised if he is. I'd be, I'd be disappointed that we've not got a, an established manager. But at the same time, if Butler's given the time to to build his own squad, get his own players in, and then if he's still not getting those results, if he's not getting that response from the from the players that he's currently not getting from this group of players, then for me that's the point where we look at cutting ties with Andy. I think he needs that opportunity with his own team. That's what I'm saying. Um, it's frustrating to see our season crumble when we're in such a such a strong position. Um, but that's football. Uh, yeah, frustrating. That's the overwhelming emotion at the minute, frustration. Because I know as a squad, we've got the ability to be much, much better than we've shown over the last six to eight weeks. And we kind of showed that on Saturday. In the second half, we were better on the ball, but just looked void of any sort of ideas going forwards. Uh, we looked wide open on the counter attack and, and that showed with Wigan getting the fourth goal and killing the game off and for me that is season over. Very frustrating to say but I think it is now we're playing for pride and to try and get as close to those playoff spots as we can. Moving on to player focus, this week I have gone with Fajiri or Fahiri Okanabiri, our top scorer. He started on the bench on Saturday, came on, didn't really show enough for me. I would love to see Omar Bogle and Okunabiri playing as a front two. Bogle just seemed very, very isolated once again, frustrated, head in his hands. He's not making enough movement for me, but I don't think that's the player that Bogle is. I think Bogle, for me, play the ball into him and other players should be feeding off him. And I think that's why, rather than Okunabiri being out wide, should be pulled in a little bit closer, but I'm not the manager, it's not my decision to make, but as our top scorer for me, he should be on the pitch, especially with us struggling to score goals at the minute, get him on the pitch, get him feeding off of Omar Bogle, and who knows, our form may turn a corner. Moving on to the opponent, Burton Albion, founded in 1950, Already mentioned, currently managed by Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank and what a cracking job he has done since taking charge. 65, roughly, percent win record since coming in. Unreal. And these are a team with on an upward trajectory, unlike us, so it's going to be a very, very tough game. Jimmy sets the team up well uh, against Portsmouth. They only had 22% possession, but what they did with the ball, put it in the back of the net two times. Pompey only did that once, so we've got to... Seriously look out for that. We may have a lot of the ball, but without damaging them in the attacking third for us, it's pointless having that ball. There's only one stat that matters, and that's the one in the top corner of the screen. And they ran out 2-1 winners, so Jimmy clearly knows how to set a team up to do a job on an opponent. So we've got to watch out for that. Fantastic manager, as is showing since taking charge in January. A couple of honours for Burton. League 1 runners-up in 2015-16. 
the two winners in 2014-15 and they came up from the Conference National in 2008-2009. Moving on to the one to watch for you guys. This is only in my opinion, as I said at the start of the video, you guys know your club much better than what I do. So if there's anybody else in the comments down below, let me know. But I am going with Kane Hemmings. Scored a hat-trick a few weeks back. Top scorer with 13 goals and I think he's got four or five assists, maybe maybe a few less. Uh, so definitely one to watch for me in a Burton shirt. If he's got the ball in and around the box and given the space, he could punish us. Um, top scorer for Burton this season. So yeah, definitely one to watch. But there are other players from the midfield that are feeding balls through. Um, so like I say, in the comments down below, let me know the ones to watch for you, but I'm going with Kane Hemmings on Tuesday night. And moving on to the predictions league table, so if you are new to this, me and the family predict the scoreline for every league game. Uh, if we get the scoreline spot on, we get three points. If we get the outcome of the game right, but not the result, we get one point. If we get it completely wrong, we get no points. We were all pretty positive on Saturday. We thought potentially we were going to turn a corner against Wigan. And we all went with Rovers wins. So, unfortunately, there is no change in the table. No change in the points. Max is still top on 24. Me and my dad joined second on 20. And Chris holding the table up on 19. And if you are new to this, I now post our predictions before the game on my Twitter account, which is linked in the description down below. So, if you want to keep a tab of that, so that you can see what our family are predicting before the next preview, you can do so by following me on there. And finally, on to my score prediction. So, I don't know if it's come across throughout the video. Um, confidence is running low in the Rovers fans camp. And for me, that's continuing to Tuesday night. I think Burton are in a very, very good position. The, the pushing on with Jimmy at the helm. We're unfortunately heading in the opposite direction to what Burton currently are. I think this is going to continue on Tuesday night. It's good that games come thick and fast because you can kind of get over results. But for us, we've seen it on both both sides of the coin. We've, we've had thick and fast games coming where we've just not been able to get out of this run of form. We've had a week's break or six days break between games and the results been the same on the pitch. The players need to step up. The, the management needs to step up. Everybody within the club needs to needs to step up and, and steer the ship back in the right direction but Tuesday night I don't think it's going to be the night for us I think it's going to be a long one I think it's going to be a tough one I think we're going to get beat once again horrible to say but I think we're going to get beat 3-1 on the night I hope I'm wrong I've predicted confidently over the last couple of weeks and been proven wrong so I'm hoping Hoping a bit of reverse psychology works. If I go with a, a defeat, potentially the win will come. That's a theory anyway. So, yeah, 3-1 defeat I'm going for, but I'm hoping for a win. We need that win. We're waiting for that win. And hopefully Tuesday night is it, but that is my score prediction. And that's where I'm going to leave this video. If you've enjoyed it, big thumbs up for us, please. Comment in the section down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.